Luftfarten tar nå raske steg mot nullutslipp. Kan elfly snart bli like vanlig som elbiler? Ta vel imot Birger Sten fra Sunum Aero. Thank you. At Zunum Aero, we're um, building the first electric plane that most of you will ever fly in. And we're going to do that in the next five years. In the process, we will bring affordable high-speed travel to many more communities that have it today, and will ultimately enable people to live where and how they want and to travel where they like on their terms. Now, in the process, We want to eliminate half of emissions from commercial aviation. That's incidentally about the half that's emitted by short and medium distance travel today. And we think that that part of aviation can be fully electrified over the next decade. Now, before we talk about how to do that, let's talk about how it, or why it hasn't been done already. Over the past seven years, Jet engines have powered this incredible boom in travel. Every 15 years, the number of kilometers traveled in, in commercial aircraft has doubled. And uh, the way that had happened, and the way it's become affordable to most of us, is that planes have become bigger and bigger. The uh, principle of a jet engine or a turboprop engine is that it needs to be big in order to work efficiently. As a consequence, the average number of seats on a regional airplane has gone from 20, only 30 years ago, to 60 and growing towards 80 today. And again, as a consequence of that, today we have a, a travel pattern where practically all of air traffic goes through this very small percentage of airports. In fact, in the US, 1% of airports carry 96% of, of air travel. In the EU, 85% of air traffic goes through 43 of the 2,800 airports in the European Union. And the only real alternative is high-speed rail, which works really well if you live, say, in Paris or in Lyon, but not so much if you want to go to Toulouse or someplace off that very limited high-speed uh, rail network. So what we are going to address the challenge is actually to, in a sense, reverse the development towards bigger scale and more travel into hubs, um, to which you, of course, have to drive or use some other inefficient form of transport. We're going to put everybody in smaller planes with clean propulsion, 100% electric propulsion, initially powered by a serial hybrid drivetrain, which means batteries plus a turbo generator. But as batteries become um, better able to build or to, to contain more electricity, fully electric planes that will fly out to distances of 1,000 kilometers or more. And uh, this technology will enable us to switch from today's travel pattern where people take large jets to hubs, so they fly from a place they're not really living at to a place they're not really going to, and then they have to take some other form of transport to their destination, to much better utilization of the 35,000 airports that exist on planet Earth. Um, we're going to simplify the service. You board a smaller plane, it takes shorter time. Eventually, we want to think of these planes more as buses than as, as planes. And uh, in certain markets, such as the United States, it will also enable us to reduce the time spent on the ground in the airport in things such as security checks, because there are much lower um, barriers for that for smaller planes. And travel will get much more personalized end-to-end. -end. Um, and as I said, we'll be able to use all these airports. This, every little dot there is an airport on the planet that are to the point of 90% underutilized today. Our first plane is going to fly in 2022, and you're all very welcome to, to board it, hopefully here in Norway. And uh, we are scaling up uh, through the decade to larger planes that will cover essentially everything out to something like 2,000 kilometers of travel. And with that, we're able to get you there on schedule faster than today 
we were able to get you there at a, tr at a sh lower price. Um, the economics of electric uh, trans transport through air is about 30, 40, 50 percent better than using hydrocarbons. Uh, you can fly to all these airports you just saw, and most importantly, we'll be able to eliminate emissions from commercial air travel below um, 1,700 kilometers or so, and uh, in the process, uh, help uh, help uh, <clears throat> achieve the objective of the air travel industry of cutting emissions by half. Thank you. Vi går nå fra et energisystem hvor råvaren er hydrokarboner til et energisystem hvor råvaren egentlig er kapital. Vår kapitalbase som vi har etablert gjennom olje- og gassnæringen, de pengene vi har tjent på olje og gass, de kan gjøre en stor forskjell. For kapital er den viktigste innsatsfaktoren i fornybar energi. Både sol, vind og vannkraft er konkurransedyktig mot fossil energi i store deler av Afrika. Men kapitalen er for dyr, renta er rett og slett for høy, og det gjør at prosjektene blir vanskelig å realisere. Norge har den kombinasjonen av kapital og kunnskap som gjør at vi kan knekke denne nøtta. Vi kan bidra til å redusere risikoen og sørge for at prosjektene blir lønnsomme, og sørge for at private investorer og selskaper finner dette spennende og attraktivt. Norfund har jo vist at det er mulig å gjøre lønnsomme investeringer som samtidig sikrer en veldig god utviklingseffekt. Her er det en kjempegod mulighet for en norsk aktør til å virkelig gå foran for grønn vekst. Oljefondet det bør investere pengene sine på en slik måte at det sikrer pensjonspengene våre gjennom at vi investerer i grønt og i fornybart, og i tillegg til at det da samtidig vil være med å nå klimamålene våre. Det er ikke bare folk med seisapparat som bygger oljerigger, det er også økonomer, det er finansfolk, det er advokater, det er konsulenter. De har en drøss med kunnskapsarbeidsplasser som handler om å realisere prosjekter i olje. Og jeg tror at hvis vi begynner å investere i energiprosjekter i utviklingsland, et marked i enorm vekst, mens oljemarkedet vil være i nedgang, men for det andre så er det en mulighet for å bruke kompetansen vår på å utvikle prosjekter og finansiere prosjekter til å, til å drive frem grønn vekst i utviklingslandet. Thank you.